Trimanisha is an opera that focuses on a story about a woman. Trimanisha is an opera that deals with the themes of family, community, education, and leadership. It's known as the first opera, especially in the North American continent, composed by an African-American creative. That would be composer Scott Joplin. Even though Joplin was considered the king of ragtime, he didn't refer to himself as such. Joplin considered his music to encompass a wide range of musical style. Trimanesha was written at the turn of the 20th century, but the opera's setting is after the Reconstruction era. Joplin synthesized his musical ideas into a conventional three-act opera. He scored it, wrote the libretto, and choreographed it. Joplin had a mind to set this opera during the Reconstruction era, when America was trying to reconstruct itself from the South and the North. Even now, we're constantly reconstructing ourselves as we should as people. Joplin dreamed of combining Western and African musical traditions, a work that would announce to white America that black music had come of age. With Tremonisha, he felt that goal was within his grasp. What better way to do it with music? Music is a universal language. It unifies us, it brings us together. No matter where you're from, what language you speak, uh, no matter whether you are educated or whether you're not educated in music. Sneed reimagined Joplin's work in an expanded version of Tremonisha. Joplin wrote three acts, and those acts, one, two, and three, have now become two, three, and four. My collaborative partner, Karen Chilton, the librettist, she and I decided to come together and create a story that would take the viewer, the listener, into the mind and the world of Scott Joplin himself. In addition to that, I took Joplin's music and I reorchestrated it. So it's not just bookends, so to speak, that we placed in front and at the end of Joplin's opera, but now it is a, it is a new work. Sneed adds two new characters, Freddie Alexander, and the maestro himself, Scott Joplin. Alexander was actually Joplin's second wife. They were married on June 14, 1904. However, she tragically died 10 weeks later from pneumonia. Sneed says his version of Tremonesia is futuristic, something everyone can find relatable. Sometimes, because of what we watch on television, because of what we hear, what we read, we also can formulate in our minds how things should be. But we wanted to make sure that there was an idea of hope, an idea of futuristic possibility. That's what Joplin did in his era, and now with technological innovation and all the wonderful things that we're learning from things in history being uncovered, we decided to set this opera in the same place with more of a forward impetus of the possibility of the future. During Joplin's lifetime, Tremonesha had only one semi-public piano performance. He became tormented over its success. Sadly, in his early 40s, Joplin suffered a nervous breakdown due to neurosyphilis and collapsed in 1911. We have never really had an opportunity to see how Scott Joplin imagined his opera because he never had an opportunity to see his opera performed before he passed. Joplin died in 1917. It wasn't until 1972, 55 years later, when Tremonesia was fully produced on the Houston Grand Opera stage. It was the first of many opera performances held across the country. So all of these things now come into play with our expression of Scott Joplin's Tremonitia in this new adaptation through Opera Theatre of St. Louis. Oh.